argue why <laughs> the costumes are bad. Okay. And, yeah. and Craig, you have to argue why the oh. acting in Lord of the Rings is bad. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And in case you watch Rings of Power, John, the I, I was intending for it to, for you to if you said costumes for you to go why costumes are good and Craig to go why uh, okay. act, well, the acting was good, which would have been a okay. hard sell. But okay. I think regrets, even regrets. in this, let me just write this down. So Craig says acting in Lord of the Rings bad. Mm-hmm. And John says costumes in Lord of the Rings bad. Okay. okay. We're yeah. back to John, so you're going to start this off with the main argument whenever you're ready. Okay, so you've got the Rohirrim who are based on like Anglo-Saxon, 6th cent- 7th century England, and then right existing alongside them, you've got Gondor who are based on like an amalgamation of 14th century armor with like ancient <laughs> Greek helmets, and like it just doesn't make sense. What, what were they thinking? You know, like, the, and the, the the idea of of um, a, a society with with swords without crossbars existing right alongside uh, a society with crossbars it's like why 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 would that other society not see that and go oh that's a good idea to to protect our hands we need more of that and then not only that the most the most technologically advanced people in the entire of Middle Earth according to the movie movie design the Shire. Friggin' 18th century English countryside with all of these fancy big hinges and fancy big, you know, and industrial bits and pieces. You know, what's going on there? These jackets and waistcoats and three-quarter length trousers. What are they going? Like, seriously, what history were they looking at? You know, all over the place. They were just going, I'm going to take this bit. I'm going to take this bit. I'm going to take this bit. Like, seriously, were they even trying? Were they even thinking about <laughs> the about the uh, the universe building of how much that does not make sense? Fantastic. That was just so good. <laughs> Woo! How am I well supposed done, John. to argue the We should have done the bad. whole thing just about <laughs> fantasy stuff. Good luck, Craig. <laughs> Am I supposed to <laughs> do your best? Tell me why the Lord, Lord of the Rings acting is shit. It doesn't hold up. I can only think of two things that were overdone to the point where it kind of estranged the books. The character of Boromir comes off as far too sinister in Lord of the Rings, the movies. He is supposed to be undyingly loyal. He's supposed to really show fealty to brotherhood to... I'm sorry, my birds are screaming. Aren't... <laughs> All right. He's supposed to be like a brother, almost like a brother to Aragorn by the end of it. Yet in the movie, the way that they portray him, it's like, you know, oh, he's getting twisted by the ring and all that. And yes, this happens in the books. But it, it's ridiculously... It overshadows like how glorious he was, how he was about fighting for Gondor for the realm of men. And he was one of the best in the group and i feel they vilify him too much in the fellowship of the ring than they should have i apologize i have carrots okay. and uh, the steward of gondor in the third film uh does most of the actions that you see in the book but he also is kind of vilified a little bit too much they make him out to be uh, an idiot he wasn't stupid he actually led gondor for a long time as the steward and he did a lot of important things he was kind of losing it by the end of it with the loss of his son and such. I think they went a bit overkill with his character, especially the scene with the tomatoes bursting in his mouth like he's some kind of psycho. And he's so willing to burn himself alive. And, you know, it kind of twists the two characters a little bit too much. That's what I would say about the acting. Okay. Sorry, my birds just like lost it once. <laughs> yeah. How dare you speak trash about Lord of the Rings? <laughs> See how angry they are. Yeah. Okay, uh, John, it's time for you to praise the Lord of the Rings acting and say why it's not even close to bad. Well, first and foremost, to counter, do not, do not even go after those cherry tomatoes because that is iconic right there. Second of all, Barmir. You know, I mean, with a film adaptation, one has to, you know, work things a little bit, a little bit more black and white than perhaps you're able to do in a novel. But the acting in The Lord of the Rings, Sir Ian McKellen, Andy Serkis, Sean Astin should have gotten an Oscar. I mean, yeah, fair enough. He went a bit uh, very violent in film three, but still Sean Astin carried that. He literally carried Frodo. Um, 
Vigo Mortensen, last minute replacement, uh, but amazing. Bernard Hill, I'm, like, I just have to name the cast. I don't even need to point out what they do. They were just so good. Broke um, his toe. Yeah, oh my God. Like, like Andy Circus alone was just phenomenal as Gollum to bring such... Uh, nuance to this very easily cartoony character and to make him human but also continue to not redeem him to be a terrible little fecker in the end you know it's great um Time. Damn, there you go i let you go on for 10, 10 more seconds because because that was so good i'll, I'll give the same 10 <laughs> seconds to craig to praise the costume design uh but john also brought in equipment so Equipment is also a fair game for you to discuss why it's amazing. Fair. Fair. So you got 70 seconds um, to praise those two elements. In your head right now, I say the word orc. What do you see? You see Peter Jackson's Urukai, perhaps, with their ironclad swords and their shields. Those masks that go over. Before anything else, I say hobbits. What do you see? You see their little British like country bumpkinshire stuff. I say the dwarves. You know exactly what you're looking at because Peter Jackson did such dedication and work to make sure that these things looked exactly what people would think. I'll tell you a little story. You had to get the Rohirrim, the Anglo-Saxons. You had to get that look, that long hair. There wasn't enough guys. What did they have to do? They had to dress up women and put beards on them to fill out the ranks of the Rohirrim for the grand battle in the third film. I think that that's a pretty cool little fact over there. And on top of that, you think about what does a wizard look like? A lot of people will think of Gandalf from those films. What do you like, just about naming it? Just about anything, and it's going to descend to that. That's what people think of because that's what they imagine now and see. Much like the acting, mind you, but their iconic clothing. When you see Gondor, the white tree on the chest and the plates, like it's exactly the way it was supposed to be in the books. Time. Oh, that rebuttal makes things so much harder, man. That was fire. Wow. So I'm beginning to think that the costume design of the Lord of the Rings was good, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I had to attack the acting. Like, that was... what could I do? 